you're watching this video towards the end of the school year, that means it's the time of year when a lot of teachers like to do dissections for their science classes. So to prepare you for that today, we're gonna walk you through everything you might find in a basic biology or anatomy dissection kit, like one of these. And we're gonna go over what each of these tools is used for. Ready? Let's get started. All right, first, your dissecting kit may come with a ruler. This tried and true simple tool is used for measuring different parts of specimen, especially if you're doing data collection or taking any types of measurements. So your kit may have a ruler, it may not, or your teachers may give you a paper one. That's also common in lesion kits. Next up, we have our dissecting needle or fine tipped probe or sharp probe. This is a sharp needle and it's used to help separate organs. It's used to point at different things. Next up, we have our blunt or dull probe. This is a really useful tool used to manipulate specimens probe opening. Sometimes we can use it with the fine tipped or dissecting needle in order to separate and better visualize different parts of the specimen. Next, we have our pins in our dissection kit. Now these are super useful, used to hold the specimen in place. We can stick the pins directly into the specimen and secure it in place like this. Sometimes they're used to position or identify parts of our dissected organism. So you might have a lot of these within one kit or within the materials that your teacher provides you. Next, we have our small dissecting scissors. These are used to cut skin, fascia, other smaller tissues. Remember with any sharps in the lab, pins and the dissecting probe included, you always want to put them away from you so you can avoid piercing your gloves or your skin in your dissection. You'll probably use these more often than your scalpel in most of the dissections you'll do in a biology lab. Next, we have a pipette, which is used for removing small amounts of liquid or even adding small amounts of liquid into our specimen. This pipette is a reusable one. You also may see these disposable plastic pipettes, which are useful if you're measuring a certain amount of liquids because we have the volume on the sides. Next up, we have our forceps. You might call these tweezers. In the biology lab, we often call them forceps. They're used for lifting or grasping parts of organs or parts of the organism. Again, it's very important to keep these on hand along with your probes for lifting, manipulating, and indicating different parts of the organism. Finally, we have the one you're probably thinking up about most when you think about dissections, and that is the scalpel. Now remember, scalpels are sharp tools. You need to make sure that the sharp points away from you and using care when you're manipulating in scalpels, especially with the blades. Scalpels are used for making precise cuts or incisions into our specimen, but in many of the dissections that we'll do in class, we'll be using the scissors more often than the scalpels. Now, many dissection kits will come with replacement scalpel blades. These are removable and the replacement blades are sterile. And I'll open this one up for you guys to see, but now that it's open, it is no longer sterile. But in our dissection lab, there might not be a use for completely sterile blades, so you may reuse your scalpel blades depending on what your teacher's instructions are. Stay tuned for another video where I'll show you the technique for removing and replacing a scalpel blade. Again, be very careful with this because even a dull blade can still cut you. Once you're done with the dissection, it's important to follow your teacher's instructions for cleaning and returning the tools to their proper place. Even if this is your personal dissection kit, you want to wash your tools with warm water and soap after every dissection. You might even have other sterilization chemicals available in the lab. Thoroughly dry your tools before returning them to your dissection kit in order to prevent rusting and contamination. All right, so now that you're familiar with the main tools that you'll see when you're doing dissections, let's do a few practice questions to make sure you've really understood what each of these is for. Again, several of these are multi-purpose tools, so I'm looking in this case for the tool that is the most useful for each of these purposes. Which tool is used for removing small amounts of liquid? Pipette. Which tool is used for holding back layers for better viewing of the specimen? Pins. Which tool is used for cutting skin and fascia? scissors. Which tool is used for grasping and manipulating tissue? Forceps. And which tool is used for precise slicing and incisions? Scalpel. I hope you found this video helpful when preparing for your dissections in your science classes. Remember to always follow the instructor's guidelines and instructions when performing any sort of laboratory protocols. Good luck with your dissections. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.